Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, well, you know, it's that time of year again. You know, it's uh, it's low 30s, and the uh, winter forecast says that, uh, you know, we're going to get about a half an inch of snow down here in Texas. So, uh, you know, what do you do in that situation if you're in Texas? Well, I think it, it, it pretty much all leads to Winter Storm Watch 2023, Rexus in Texas, sponsored by Monster Energy Drink, y'all. Anyway, that's uh, what I'm dealing with. Um, basically, people get here and it's, uh, you know, there's like a flurry that comes down and it's immediate, like, panic. Women are giving birth on the streets riots. It's, it's just crazy town. So anyway, so I'm driving around in a nice, uh, traffic free road, uh, which is, which is great. The only downside to this. And so if I ever just stop doing videos entirely, you'll know the culprit was, um, you know, while I'm enjoying my nice serene, you know, time, maybe there's a little ice on the road, not a problem. If you just drive, you know, at all intelligent and safe, but there will be some giant semi-truck uh, barreling down the road at like 90 miles an hour, completely out of control and wipes everybody out. I think that that's clearly the end that I'm coming to uh, here in Texas. People have been writing me lately like, well, if you don't like Texas, you can get out. And it's like, I like Texas just fine. It's fine. There's good parts. There's bad parts, like pretty much everywhere. Um, you know, one of the bad parts is people drive like shit here, but in fairness, maybe they drive like shit everywhere. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm recording, you know, comic videos while I'm driving, so I'm not going to talk, but, but anyway, um, a couple things to get to. A lot of people sent me this, uh, this tweet, uh, from, uh, from our buddy, uh, Maddie, uh, old Maddie Rosenberg. And, uh, Maddie says, I finished work around four 30 last night and decided to read a comic or two in bed as a nice, relaxing wind down to the long day. I'm picturing uh, Maddie in like a, a big velvet robe and he's got like a pipe, you know, like a really big one that, that goes down and he's, he's sitting down for a nice night. He's got one of those like uh, hat caps, a kerchief. Yeah. And uh, he's like, it's time for me to indulge in some comic activity before I lay, uh, I lay my head down for slumber. Anyway, um, the tweet continues. I read Supergirl woman of tomorrow. Number four. By Tom King, uh, Vilkus Evely and company, and spent the next hour staring at the ceiling, emotionally devastated. <laughs> this got 109 likes. I mean, look, I, I also, um, you know, sometimes as a seller of comics, uh, read things by Tom King, and then stare up at the ceiling, emotionally devastated as well. That that does uh, that does happen. Um, yes. Anyway, <laughs> we're not going to pick on poor old Maddie. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, if, for me, a lot of people send me stuff, uh, about Tom King and, and, you know, I, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, uh, it's an acquired taste, I guess is the way to put it. But what, what strikes me about a lot of his work is, is that it feels emotionally manipulative. Meaning when you read it, he's, it's, it's kind of like how I feel about M. Night Shyamalan stuff. It's like, and here comes the twist. And here comes, you know, the next part where I'm going to, uh, you know, mislead you and, and get you to feel something. It just, it feels, the, the, the comics feel very, I don't know, formulaic is the word, but, but probably a pretty good one. Of It, it doesn't feel organic. The type of uh, stuff that's going on there doesn't feel like, you know, actual, it, it, it's all manufactured drama. I, and I guess, I mean, if you're a writer, your job is to manufacture stuff. So I, I get it, but. I don't know. I it just the, some of the stuff just feels a little too too um, packaged uh, for me. But but I don't know. Maybe I've just read too many comics. It's always possible. Anyway, um, let's see what we got here. Uh, he, this mail is is one for us to talk about. This is this is the purpose of the video. The real video starts at four minutes and fifteen seconds. I don't know. I'm not even looking at the timer. I could have burned up more time than that. Um, no, actually, that was pretty dead on. Hot damn! I'm on fire today. Okay, it says. Um, uh, when the lottery start a comic book company. Okay. And the mail goes, hi, hope you'll win the lottery someday. Fuck me too. Uh, the New Hampshire Powerball is up to $13 million tonight. Okay. Uh, no, oh, sorry. I misread. <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking 13 million. Oh, it's not, I don't know. I've seen bigger is what she said. No, sorry. I misread. It's $613 million. Okay. Now we're talking. It's up to $613 million, more than half a billion dollars tonight. Say, if you're a frustrated comic book fan 
And say you say you are a frustrated comic book fan and you win. Doubtful you could buy Marvel or DC and fire everyone, but you could start your own comic book company for that amount. Who would you hire first, editor, writer, or artist? Or do you just take the money and blow in a weekend in Vegas or someplace? I'll tell you, I'm not blowing in Vegas. I'm not a fan of Vegas. And um, I don't know, it goes back to that manufactured stuff. Vegas is very, very manufactured. I'm, I mean, if I'm going to blow money in a place like that, I mean, we're talking, I'm going to Bali. Uh, I, I definitely could do some damage there. Maybe, I don't know, a lot of my friends go to Dubai. I, I've been to Dubai once. I didn't particularly care for it. But, you know, uh, maybe that's your jam. I, I, sure. Um, but anyway, 613, well, first of all, you know, we got to take out the taxes in there. So, you know, under, uh, under the current administration, 613 million, I'm down to about uh, $42. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But, um, <laughs> the rich never get punished in any administration. Who are we teasing? Um, I think, it, you know, first off, uh, there is a shot. You could get DC for that price. Uh, there, there is, um, now it would come with all kinds of strings. Like it would be, you know, all the licensing deals would have to sit with the, uh, the parent and, and, uh, you, you know, you, you did all the rights of what you do had kind of unlimited, uh, movie rights. By the way, people are sending me, um, uh, teasers of what is me- is expected to be announced in uh, James Gunn's new DCU. And it sounds awful to me. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that when it comes, but, but fuck no, no. Um, But, okay, so if you're starting your own comic company, and it's probably what you'd want to do. I think I mentioned on the video a while back, and and some people know this, um, I was looking around to invest for a controlling share or purchase outright, uh, one of the small comic companies, and I came to the conclusion, a couple things. First of all, a lot of them are riddled in debt, and I mean riddled in debt. A lot of, uh, you'd be paying back a lot of people versus, you know, owning assets, in a lot of cases, the companies didn't have a lot of assets. A lot of uh, people were selling on the, we have a diamond distributor deal. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, that and uh, 50 bucks will get you, you know, 50 bucks. I, I Anyway, um, I would hire an editor first, I think. and and But I would hire more of uh, what other companies, publishing companies, sometimes call a controller. And it, it's, it's in comics, it's sometimes lovingly referred to as like editor in chief or a role like that. Basically, somebody who's going to coordinate your line. I'm looking for idea people who are going to say, hey, we watch the market. We look at where there's holes. We look at places where, you know, maybe we could go over here to a Target and they're interested in something that's going to appeal to a 12, 16, you know, female demographic. And uh, let's try and get some comics made that would appeal to that. I'm looking, that's, that's where I would go. I will say there's ice on the uh, windshield. So, you know, Rexus in Texas is uh, not, not all, not all bullshit here. Um, but, but anyway, um, I, I would look for somebody who's, uh, because classically, you know, an editor in chief is somebody who has that job. They're really looking at the marketplace. They're looking at the portfolio of talent they're trying to assemble. They're looking at uh, what's the cadence of books that are coming out. Is it meeting the market need? Somebody who is not shy to travel, somebody who would definitely get in and visit, you know, certainly direct market. Yeah. But also a lot of these other places. And I I would look for people who are going to uh, be fairly tech savvy, understand modern marketing. So I'm looking for a bit of a unicorn. You probably wouldn't have that in one person. So, you know, I'd probably be looking to assemble a team. That would be your your basic your editorial team, um, but it would be people who are really understanding. Here's what's out there. Here's the marketplace. Here's what people need. Here's all the rest. Um, here's uh, you know, and and then very closely, I'd set a quality bar of what I want the comics to be. And the quality bar basically means, hey, if we're going to go get art, if we're going to get a writer, uh, it has to meet this level. Uh, if uh, you know, if if I've got people who you know, if I, if I get work in, that's not good enough, then I'm going to want people to hold the line and not release the book. I want, you know, very, very aggressive management of how the title's ultimately going to go to the, the field. Uh, because here's a trap that I noticed with a lot of comic companies is that they, they kind of operate from a model of, um, well, this is good enough for the direct market. 
And the reality is, if you want to make a lot of money off of a book, you need to have good enough to direct market and good enough to later get printed into trade and good enough to maybe be a movie someday, but don't just shoot for that. But just, it can't just say, well, you know, this is a little indie comic will sell 2000 copies. So what do we, what do we give a shit about how this really looks or sounds or is written? No, I want the person who is in charge of, uh, you know, in a tech company call that calls quality assurance. I'd want the person who's in charge of that, a role that's typically the editor in comics, to go, we're not releasing anything in this company. Uh, you know, under if, if, I, if I heard somebody say, like, what does it really matter? The whole, you know, the entire comic's only going to go to about two, 3,000 people. Uh, fuck it, I'm not releasing that comic then. And I'm, I am releasing that person. Because I, I, I want somebody who's treating every title that goes out like it's going to sell 150, 250 you know, half a, a mil, you know, half a million copies. That's the game. Every book has to be released with that dream. If that's not the dream, you're in the wrong place. So I would build a really, really solid editorial team. And I think starting there is, uh, is key. Then I think everything else falls into place. If you get a really solid editorial team, then I think it's easier to solicit talent. I think it's easier to, uh, to get you know, all the different parts you need to have a great company. So definitely I would worry about the writers, the artists and all that. But to answer your question, I would start with editorial with the just general comic management. I would probably staff it a lot more like a traditional tech company and a lot less like a traditional comic company, meaning this controller role, quality assurance, people are going to worry about production. I mean, things that are uh, basically, you're trying to build a machine, a machine that people can count on and that works. So now we got a little bit of rain. It's uh, maybe it's freezing rain. It's uh, it's like 25 degrees outside in Texas, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a video and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm calling it now, not because I'm driving safe, because I just cannot live through another uh, comment round of why does it sound like Perch is eating potato chips while I was making a video anyway? There you go. Thanks for the mail and thanks for listening.